Hey, Tim back here from Piano Lessons on the Web. Let's see what's going to happen here. Hopefully it starts up. Oh, is it doing it? Oh, we are on today, and it looks like it worked. <laughs> How about that? All right, we got uh, Grace here. So let me know if you can't hear me for whatever reason. But it looks like we are ready to go and all functional today. Just to let you know, I did forget to send out the email ahead of time. To be completely honest with you, I took a nap um, earlier at around 6.30, and I kind of overslept for the nap. I meant to only sleep for, well, not even really sleep at all, just kind of lay down, but I slept for like an hour, uh, a little bit over an hour. So I only woke up a few minutes ago, and uh, I was feeling kind of grouchy when I first woke up, but now I'm actually coming too, and feeling a little bit more energetic. So hopefully this will go... Uh, this will go well. And the, the computer and everything is working right now. So maybe, just maybe, things are, are going to work out. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to work out one day or the other, one way or the other. Uh, hello to Grace and hello to Karen again. We're up and running tonight, I know. Isn't it surprising? Uh, just give me a second. Let me get uh, one or two things situated here because i was not expecting it to start up so smoothly uh if you've been attending recently you know exactly what i'm talking about uh okay i think i think we're in good shape here hey pablo how you doing pablo i believe you've been here uh before actually a few times if i remember correctly welcome back to the classroom if you're wondering what i'm doing my Microphone cable is stuck, of course. There we go. All right, perfect. Hello, Tanny. Welcome back to the classroom. Welcome, everybody. We got Karen, of course, back here. When, uh, <laughs> back here again. All right, hopefully everybody's having a great night. If it's your first time out here or you're a returning student, feel free to say hello. Uh, but if you just want to sit back, relax, and enjoy... You know, feel free to do that as well. So we're going to get started here in about two minutes or so. Um, I One thing I want to tell you is that if you did not watch our first... I'm going to bring this up later too. But if you did not watch our first composition lesson uh, that we did about picking chords for your piece, please watch that video. I did put it in the description. It's also in one of the cards up top. So if you're kind of lost about i mean even if you didn't watch that lesson you should be able to understand the general premises of um, premise why did i say premises the general premise i just woke up that's why a general premise of what we're talking about but i highly recommend you check that out first um in, you know because i'm just going to jump over the chord stuff and get right to it all right um i think we're almost ready i'm just going to get the book here ready to go i'm mostly going to be talking about this book and if you're wondering, what is he talking about? Well, you're going to find out in a second. So I'm going to start the Facebook stream, and I think we're going to be uh, ready to go. Okay, so just give me, uh, it's going to be less than a minute or so, probably only a few seconds here as long as everything goes smoothly. Um, okay. Okay. Hello students, hello students and welcome back out to our classroom, Tim back here from Piano Lessons on the Web and if it's your first time out watching on Facebook, make sure to like our page and if you're watching it's your first time on YouTube, make sure to subscribe because we got new lessons coming out every Friday, every Sunday live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we also have some other lessons and announcements peppered out in between, so you don't want to miss a beat. So make sure to like and subscribe. And you also want to share this video on your favorite social media. Share it with your friends, anybody you think that would find this useful, because the more students we have in attendance, the better of a class we have, the better of a 
discussion we will have today. We are talking about how to write chords for your composition lesson. I don't know why I said it so strangely like that, but uh, that is what we're doing today. So let me just get situated here. All right. Um, there we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, students, so today we're talking about how to pick rhythms for your composition lesson. If you have not seen the lesson about how to pick chords on piano, I highly, or yeah, how to pick chords on piano, I highly recommend you check that one out first because it's really important to understanding uh, this lesson because we're going to kind of go over that, um, you know, very, very quickly. So in the last lesson, we're talking about how you can use your knowledge of chords and scales to pick out what we call a chord progression. And I think for today's example, just to make it simple, we're doing a one, four, five, one progression. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna spice it up a little bit. We are actually going to fit in rhythms for these chords because this will be the base rhythm for our entire piece. If you don't know, when you are writing a piece of music, the, it's really important if you're shooting to sound like a certain genre of music, say you want to play jazz or you want to play funk or you want to write a piece uh, classical or rock or anything, you have to look up what are the common um, types of rhythms, what are the common types of beats that you find in those pieces. And one of the things I highly, highly recommend you check out is this book here called The Drummer's Bible. You can actually look online if you don't have um, one of these or you don't have the funds for this book. I think it's around, th I mean, this retails for $32. You might be able to pick it up a little bit cheaper. Um, but if you don't have one of these, you can look up, like say uh, you're trying to um, you know, write a piece in funk, just type in um, rhythms used in funk music and you'll find generally the same information. But this is a great book because it's literally all of the styles all in one book. I haven't really found a style that's not in here in some form or another. Now, this is really for drummers in playing these different types of drum beats. But what it's great for, and I mean great for, is it's wonderful for picking a style of music. As you can see, it's listed here. We got acid jazz, African contemporary, uh, Afro-Cuban. I don't know much about those. Uh, blues, Brazilian, um, you know, jazz, a lot of, th basically anything you can think of, they have here, um, you know, blue, and then they have different types of blues, a bomba, whatever that is, um, we got hip hop, so it's really, really great, so what you do is you say, all right, let's write a piece, you know, let's go for rock, because I do want to make things easy today, I don't want to pick a type of uh, rhythm that's really, really hard to um, get the hang of since we're kind of new at this. So uh, we got a couple of um, options here. We got rock and roll early, 133, and then we got rock and roll hard time feel, rock and roll standard rock. I think we're going to go for rock and roll standard rock on page 135. So it's it's really, really awesome. So you, you flip over here, and then I'm going to show you how these apply to the chords in a second. So 135, standard rock. Now, let me help you uh, decipher this page, and I will um, make this a little bit easier for you to see when I edit the video if you can't see that tiny, tiny print. Um, but anyway, let me lift it up there a little bit. But as you can see that they have, um, you know, hi-hat, snare, and bass. These are where the bass notes hit. And one thing to consider when you're writing uh, in a style of music is where do the accents hit? Well, if you take a look here, we're in 4-4, four, four, and the accents actually hit on beat 1, beat 2, beat 3, and beat 4. So it's a very steady, very standard uh, kind of beat. It doesn't mix around with it. It doesn't shuffle or anything like that. You have, um, And then you also have um, a stronger accent with the bass note. The bass note also kind of tells you where the accents are going to fall. Uh, so you have a, a strong accent on beat 1 and beat four. So how do I translate this into chords? Well, let me show you. So let me put this um, aside so we can grab it, you know, real easy. Okay, so remember what we got from this is that we have um, a very steady beat with eighth notes. 
and you're going to have um, a strong uh, accent on beat one, one and two, and a beat three, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And. So just see if you can replicate the rhythm just in the chords and uh, then try playing it through you know, your chord progression. Like I said, we're gonna do a standard one, four, five, one. So we're playing C major, F major, G major, but we're playing it in this rhythm. So here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. One and, two and, three and, four and. So as you can see, that had a very, it actually did have a rock feel to it. Now, the next part of the composition lesson we'll talk about is how to put a melody on top and conform that to the rhythm, but that's generally how you do it. It's seriously as simple as what kind of piece do I want to play. You either look up on the internet or the drummer's Bible. I'll make sure to put an Amazon link in the description so you can find this. And also, if you buy it from the link, it will help out the channel um, a bit. So, yeah, you either want the drummer's Bible or you want to look it up online, the style you're going for, and then you want to conform your chords to that rhythm style. What you can also do is if you are a veteran at writing sheet music, especially if you have something like Staff Pad. Let me bring up Staff Pad. Um, in Staff Pad... Oh, wait. How do I get spell Staff Pad? All right. Now, now I'm glitching. The, um, the, the technology is working great, but I'm not. All right, here we go. All right. So anyway, you want to conform your chords to that based on the um, accents and things. So let's take a look um, at Staff Pad. Yeah, this is pretty good. Okay, so we're going to create a new score. And you can do this in any rhythm notation, not any rhythm notation, any composition software but I happen to use Staff Pad a lot, so you add an instrument. And actually what you can do is obviously you can add in your piano and write in your chords there. But what you can do is you can, um, actually, you know what, let me bring up the full screen here as I wanna show you. You can actually go to percussion, right? And you can go, find this thing called drum kit, add that in there. And there you go, I always like to have drum kit on the bottom. And then now we have a place where we can literally write in the same rhythm that we find, you know, in the book. So if I find, you know, this rhythm right here, let's see if you can see it, hopefully, this rhythm right here, I can literally rewrite this into Staff Pad and it will play the drum beats where they're supposed to go. So not only do you have the chords then playing the correct rhythms, but you also have you know, the actual drum kit doing it as well, which is what you want to do if you want to write a full-size composition. If you're if you're just writing for one instrument, the piano, stick to just making the chords conform to the rhythm. All right, let's kind of like go through another example here. I'm not going to write out this rhythm because it'll just take a while. And you can already see what it's going to look like um, right there. All right, you know what? I'm... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right, let's look up, wait, let me get this here. Let's look up another style, just to kind of get our beak wet with this, just to kind of see um, what we want to do or what you may want to do. So you may want to do something a little bit more complicated than rock. And I want to do another example because it'll show you like what are some of the differences between the styles. You know, I really like funk music, if you know me. You might know that, I don't know if I've mentioned that on the channel before. Um, th things like Parliament and Flashlight, uh, those, you know, Parliament's a great group. All right, so we got 74. Okay. Flip to the page that you want. Here you go, here's 73. 74, funk, right? Um, so there's no New Orleans funk. There's a bunch of different types, but you know what? We're just going to do... The first type since you know i just kind of want to explain here so if you take a look here at the drummer's bible here you go i guess that's easiest to see for you there um you, we now have accents where are the accents is really one what you want to ask yourself when placing these chords so you take a look here so we actually have an accent on beat one and then do we have an accent on beat two 
No, we actually do not. We actually have an accent on the and of two. So really so far we have one and two and. One and two and. Whereas before we had one and two and. One and two and. A real steady beat. This has more of a shuffle to it. One and two and. And then if you take a look, our next accent isn't until beat four. So it's going to go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So if I wanted to convert it to a very simple funk rhythm, that's uh, what I would do. The difference is now instead of having accents on every beat, they're shifted off a little bit. You have still have beat one, which makes sense, but then you're shifting off beat two. You don't even have an accent on beat three. And then beat four. And then, of course, like I talked about before, in a composition software, I can literally cop copy this um, drum line into there, and that'll help reinforce the different rhythms you can do. Um, Cheryl asks, can you use a drum machine instead of the book? Yeah, so you can definitely do a drum machine, which is like a software where you can make drum beats from that. That works as well. Um, I don't know. I, I could look one. Well, I don't know if there's one online or not. Um, I'd have to look for that. But yeah, you can definitely do that instead of the book if you didn't have access um, to the book. Uh, I actually don't know any funk pieces. I wish I did. I, I could. Um, funk is just a style of music. All right, so let me continue on here. So if I'm playing this funk rhythm in our chord progression here, you know, remember that it's accent on beat one, one and two, and then and, and then none on three, three and four and one and two and three and, whoops, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four and. So that's generally how you're going to go about and um, basically picking chords to fit them into your song. Okay, the Real, real Ones of Fan says I have a book of 250 drum machine patterns. Uh oh, the allergies are here. Uh, I can only, I can use with my TR8. I tend to just make up my own patterns. Yeah, you can of course experiment with your own patterns as well. Uh, Rich says, I find it more comfortable to play certain chords with 1, 2, 4, 5, like D sharp minor 7th. Is that okay to do or is it wrong to do? D sharp minor 7th. Okay. Um, 1, 2, 4, 5. Yeah, you can use 1. Uh, excuse me. You can use 1, 2, 4, 5 for sure. I like 3, but no, 4 is fine. That's good, says Grace. All right, wait, let me see. Hello, Carol. Grace is here. Linda is back once again. Let me find a, a funk piece for you to see if I can play it. I don't even know. I don't know if they're very piano friendly. <laughs> uh, meaning that, like, I'm not sure if there's any. There has to be. There has to be piano funk music. You would think I'd play piano funk if I liked funk music, but. Um, I don't know. What can I say? I'm a weirdo. I definitely don't want to play any on YouTube of somebody else's because I don't think that will work out too too well. Um, hmm. Okay, Muse Score. Muse Score is pretty good most of the time. There's even a funkpianolessons.com slash blog. Funk Groove and F. Let's check this out. Whoa. Okay, these chords here, I'm not sure about. Oh, let me show you exactly what I'm doing. So you're like, what is going on here?
What's weird though is this this only has the accents I was talking about and beats me and measures two and four. One and two. Yeah, one and two and one and one and two and. So they always have these funky bass lines as well. Let me show you with the piano. Hopefully you can play it. Like that. They tend to have a lot of like like jumps in the bass line. And then they do like a kind of a chromatic run kind of thing like that. That's pretty common in a lot of funk. What I like about funk is always the bass lines. I'm a big bass line person. When something has a catchy bass line, uh, I tend to like the song a lot better. Let me find something I can play a little bit easier because these chords are not even like possible with my hands. Uh, let's see here. Check out Pinterest. You know, Pinterest sometimes is pretty good, except for in this case, in finding sheet music. Um, nope. And there's a lot of syncopated rhythms as well. So what I may do for time's sake is I may just simplify the chords on this one. So I'll still play it. We'll see how I actually do. Just like that, and actually if you can hear the uh, chord progression in the background, that it's actually just a one four five one. So chord one here. Whoops. And then um, uh, chord four. Back to one. And then probably chord five, which, hey, uh, take a look. That's what it is. I mean, I should play funk more often. It's actually pretty fun. So there you go. I won't play the rest of it because it, then it gets funkier from there. Sounds quite jazzy. Yeah, funk and jazz have a lot of overlap. One thing to know about musical genre is a lot of musical genre builds on whatever came before it. So jazz came and then funk. You know what? Let's look up the history of funk real quick. See, or look up like um, what are the inspirations for funk. So, so for instance, you know, a, a very good example that we talked about many times on this channel is the difference between like Baroque, which is Bach. And, oh wait, no, that's also Bach. Um, let's see. Um, oops. And then Beethoven, which is, um, cl which is classical. Now, there's a lot of overlap. Classical borrows a ton of ideas from Baroque, but they're not exactly the same. So whenever you're looking at a genre of music, you can see that it's borrowing ideas. You know, there's ideas in funk that, you know, originated back in Baroque. So it's very common for them to uh, sound. I, I'm laughing here because as you can see, it, it's very common for them to sound like each other. Funk. I just looked up funk and it says a state of depression. <laughs> uh, a coward. Okay. Uh, that's not what we're looking for. So we want to look up for like funk music genre. Funk music. Here we go. You know, Wikipedia, some people uh, do not like Wikipedia. I find for music stuff, it's generally pretty good.
Okay, funk is a music genre that uh, originated in African-American communities in the mid-1960s. So it's after jazz. It's uh, from the same community that jazz came out of, the African-American uh, community. And, um, you know, so it makes sense that it's going to have a lot of similar uh, elements to it. Uh, funk de-emphasizes melody and chord progressions used in other related genres and brings a strong rhythmic groove of a bass line played by an electric bassist, that's why I love it so much, and a drum part by a drummer in the foreground. So it's a lot more rhythm-based than, um, you know, something like romantic music. Where you have these long melodies, it's going to have a lot less of that. As you can see, actually, from the funk song that we played, that there's actually no melody at all. It's actually seriously um, just a lot of chords, and that could be why it sounds like blues and jazz as well, because blues and jazz is, uh, jazz also use a lot of comping chords. So when I am playing, you know, say my B flat blues, I sure use these melodies. Sometimes I'll just comp on the chords, meaning just, you know, playing a rhythm with them that suits the, you know, what I'm going for. Sorry, I got a little, uh, got a little carried away there. All right, let's take a look at uh, what some of the other comments are. So that's actually apply that to pretty much any genre you're going for. Look it up, whether it's on Wikipedia or somewhere else on the internet, and see what like the style is going for. So as you can see, just by looking up funk, that I learned more about it. You know that I'm not going to be using melodies. I've never written in funk before. I'm not going to be using melodies. Um, as much. I'm going to be using more chords that go along with uh, the beat. Too advanced for me. That's okay, uh, Bernadine. So what I want everybody to get out of this, like the thing about this channel and whenever you're watching our live streams and all of a sudden I'm talking about something you're totally unaware of or it's just too much for you, try to make like a bullet point list of like three things you want to get out of the lesson and I'll give you those three now. We'll see if I can think of them on the spot. The one thing I want you to really grab a hold of is that music genre is defined by a few things. It's defined by rhythm, which is what we're talking about today, defined by harmony, which is the chords that are used, and melody, and a few other things, but just remember chords, or, or rhythm, chords, and melody. Um, and a music genre has a certain, you know, style or a certain, you know, rhythms or any of those other things that I mentioned. So to write in a certain style, you want to first look up what that style is going for, what kind of rhythms it has, and then, um, you know, kind of conform the piece to that. Now, you might ne have never written a piece before, but just know, like, the general blanket idea that musical genre is defined by the rhythm, by its harmony, and by the melody. Okay, let's see. Uh, Tim, are the same chords usually played throughout a particular song? Would it just be a few, like three or four? Most of the time, Rich. Yeah, so um, the answer to the, that question is yes. Most of the time, it's going to be using the same types of chords over and over. There, there's chords that are used all throughout funk music. Now, it doesn't mean that they can't deviate from that. Maybe they're going for something more experimental, or maybe it's written by somebody, a, a, you know, you know, very recently, who's just writing in a funk style, but also wants, you know, different types of chords in there as well. That's possible, but generally, like with funk here, like th the simple funk we just played, by the way, for every genre, there's subgenres that, that branch out a little bit. Uh, but in standard funk, it looks like it's a very standard 1, 4, 5 progression. Now, can it branch out from that? Probably a little bit. I would imagine it can. But a lot of the blues and everything is uh, what it's based on is very standard 1, 4, 5. Jazz, uh, harmony-wise, really branches out. Um, and they start using different 
really going different with the chords and everything. But the answer to that is a simple yes. Play something dark and somber in a compound time signature. All right. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think ahead of time about the, uh, you know doing that. Let's see. Bernadine says, okay. What does the main difference between funk and rock? Well, funk, okay, so good question. So remember I was talking about before in the beginning of the lesson that rock has a very even feel. Whereas funk has a more um, syncopated feel, you could say, where certain beats are shifted over. So it's like one... Rather than rock is very, uh, with its rhythm anyway, is very, um, very consistent. It doesn't it doesn't shift the beats around or anything like that. That's the main difference. Great goal to shoot for. Let me see if I uh, missed anybody. All right, we missed some uh, important stuff on people's uh, uh, Karen's. Karen's a dog person. Let's see. Can't wait till I can play jazz and blues. No thanks, my girlfriend hates them. Oh, cats that is. I thought you, I thought your girlfriend hated funk music, Rich. Uh, do you? We have three, two of them. Uh, we've been. Wait, wait been trying to offload them onto Tim. Why? But he's not biting. <laughs> well, let's send air mail. Oh my goodness. No, sending me pets. Oh, you, oh, it's a cat, though. Oh, man. I don't know. I'm going to have to reconsider if it's a cat. But I really don't want to... I don't want a cat right now. I do want a cat uh, in maybe a year or so. Any tips on time signatures for dummies like Laredo? Oh, you're not a dummy, Laredo. Time signatures are showing me flames. Okay. Time signatures for dummies like Laredo. Can I make a lesson called that? I don't want to do that. Um, time signatures for... I just think that would be a funny lesson for a title. And to single like one student out would be funny, but I'm not that mean. Uh, let's see. Time signatures. Let's see where... I'm sure I have lessons that I don't know if you've seen. If you've seen them, I can go into a little bit, or I can point you somewhere else. Um, you know what? Let me, let me go here. Time signatures. A. Um. Okay. Okay, have you seen this collection of uh, these three lessons? Uh, your first rhythm in lessons for beginners, beats, time signatures, and tempo. If you have not seen that one, I highly, highly recommend you do. Um, and then there's one like how to count in two, four, and three, four time uh, below it. And then how rhythm works, which is basically an older version of that first lesson. So you don't really have to watch that one. Uh, oh, go back. And then there is a lesson on compound type signatures. So that's things like 6, 8, 9, 8, and 12, 8. I actually think I'm going to make a lesson on each of those. You know, I'm going to make a lesson on 6, 8 by itself. So have you seen all these lessons, Laredo? That's what I want to know. Accents and time signatures. So actually, that would be a great lesson to watch, you know, right after the one you watch here, because then I go into more detail about accents in those. Um, you can also watch some other videos like Michael New has a good one on understanding 6-8 time and things like that. And that looks like all the time signature videos that I have. There we go. Um, oh, and then actually I have a playlist called How to Play Rhythms on the Piano. Um, you might want to check that out as well. I hate 2-2 signature. <laughs> Well, it's just like um, it's just like four four, but twice as fast. It hurts my head too, Rich, and I've been doing this for a while. For a while. Okay, Laredo, let me know if you haven't seen those lessons, and I'll try to come up with something. Uh, you know what? I might even make a new 
rhythm lesson. It's been a while. About 2-2, two, two, you know, that's a good idea. Um, let's see. I don't have the list with me. Oh, yeah, you know what? I'm actually on the laptop where I write all this stuff down. Um, and actually, I have it. Actually, I have a lesson on um, triplet 6-8 time signature already written. And I do have more lesson ideas than this. This is just my uh, most recent ones. So actually, and one thing I wanted to write down on the last lesson was uh, more about music genres um, like jazz, you know, pop, etc. And then, um, let's see, 2-2 um, two, two time signature. Let me put this up here next to 6-8. Since they're kind of related. And I also... Oh, there's another lesson on triplets. Okay. So as you can see, this is kind of like a preview as to what may be coming up. I mean, I, I like to sort through the lessons a lot. Figure out what's the best. I shall take a look at the recommended lessons. Thank you for that. Truly appreciated. You're very, very welcome. Karen says, cheerfully, they're all the pain. <laughs> okay, you're talking about the um, pets again. We got Tanny says, I agree with 2-2. Two, two. All right, let's see. Uh, have I missed anybody's question so far? So if I've missed your question about anything, uh, let me know. That's actually the end of the main part of the lesson today. I knew it wasn't going to take very long because it's a pretty simple idea, but it's probably something if you're uh, in a compositions that you probably don't know about or maybe you haven't considered about, you know, picking up a drummer's Bible or something like that. They're, they're really handy to have around. Okay, any questions or anything? Well, some questions might be rolling in uh, if I've missed any. Uh, let me kind of tell you guys about some stuff that's coming up. Uh, let's first talk about the upcoming... Well, actually, let's do this first. Okay. And that's what we want. Okay. All right, students. I really want to tell you about, over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. I have over 20 courses I've made designed to help you learn a lot more about piano and music. And uh, there's things, there's courses here for beginners, intermediate, and advanced students. They include instructional videos like the ones you see over here on the YouTube channel, although they are exclusive to the courses. Uh, printable sheet music examples, assignments, activities, and a lot more th uh, other things that will help you not only learn each topic, but practice it and master it as well. So it can really t take you to that next level beyond what the YouTube channel can offer. And I especially want to let you know right now because there is a sale going on for a week only and, to, and it ends on April 28th, so less than a week actually, and next Saturday. Um, so you want to check it out so you can get a discount on any course and any course pack. If you want to know about the course packs, you go to buy courses and you can actually get a good deal by buying courses in these packs because you're getting multiple courses in with uh, one price, which is much lower then buying them individually. So check that out. And as you can see, even those are on sale. But if you just want to pick up one single course, you can scroll down here and see what you want. Uh, for each course, you can click on it, and it will take you um, to a, uh, a description page. But if you want to learn more about it, you click on Course Description, and then you can see a preview video. You can scroll down and see um, all the information you need to see there. So like I said, if you like what you see over here on the channel, you're really, really going to like what you see over on the website. And it also helps the channel out at the same time. So go to pianolessonsontheweb.com today and sign up before the 28th. You don't want to wait on it because you might forget. I know I probably would. Uh, anyway, uh, have a good one and check it out. Okay, back here. Okay, uh, if a musician calls out a key signature, does it narrow down the notes uh, available to play within a song? The answer is yes, it does. But you can use notes outside of the key. Notes in the key are called diatonic notes. 
notes outside of the key are called non-diatonic notes uh, or non-chord tones, uh, depending on what chord is going on. You need to learn how to use non-diatonic notes to use them properly to get them to sound right. Uh, but you're generally, uh, when you pick a key, it's generally limiting the, uh, the notes that you're going to be seeing overall. Like if someone says the song is in the key of G, does that narrow the options and simplify the options? The answer is yeah. So let me kind of uh, go into a little bit more detail about this. So if somebody says something is in the key of G, you know, if you know anything about the key of G, it has one sharp, F sharp. And that's basically telling you that for the most part in the piece, you're not going to have F naturals. I mean, you can write them in in the middle, but most of the Fs are going to be sharp. And for the most part, all the other notes are natural. You're not going to have a lot of these other um, keys, you know, a lot of the other black keys or sharps or flats. You're really just it's really restricting you pretty much to those notes right there. Like I said, you can have you can have other notes in there, but you have to know what you're doing to do them, and you're not going to see those very often. Hey, Olio's back again. Welcome back to our classroom. Uh, Laredo says, for anyone who has not bought Tim's courses, I definitely highly recommend that you buy them. Great lessons on the web. Thank you very much, Laredo. I appreciate that very much. I'm really fine with either. Oh, I think you guys are, uh, wait, let me see. Uh, so it's going to be watching our live classroom. At first, when you, Karen, when you said he's Tim's cat, I was like, wait, is there something I don't know about? <laughs> like, did you give me a cat that's around here somewhere? But I see. So whenever you're watching, uh, he comes by. That's awesome. That is weird, Rich. Rich says, I've stayed too long in a relationship with somebody because I loved her cat. <laughs> is that weird? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Okay, although I agree, although some of the exercises are killer at times. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to try to add in some other exercises that are a little bit uh, simpler for the beginner's courses. Uh, once you get to piano level three, uh, then it should be getting a, um, you know, a little bit more. <laughs> it should be a little bit more um, involved at that point. But I'll try to add in some easier exercises. It all depends on the person as well. Some people don't find them uh, very challenging and some people are like, well, you know, uh, it's a little challenging for where I'm at, but that's very standard. When I teach students out of an Alfred book or anything, I get the same thing where some students just go right, you know, by them, you know, right past the, uh, or right through the exercises, no problem. And then some, especially in the beginning, they struggle a bit. So that's pretty common. No matter what you're, what you're learning for, add some more, uh, just to make sure you finish me off. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I might not do that right away. If anything, they'll be like really easy ones. But I'm just kidding. Okay. All right. Anybody have any other questions about music genre or anything in general? Let me talk about uh, while some more things are coming in or you guys are talking about. Um, you're passing notes around. In classes, Karen says about cats. Uh, let me go to the community page. So over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. If you liked attending these live streams and you want to see what we're up to, when we're going to be talking about what, head over to the community page. The first thing you could do that I recommend that I actually forgot to do tonight because I, like I said, I was taking a nap earlier and I woke up uh, only like a little bit before we started. But anyway, uh, you fill out this form and you will get an email reminder 30 minutes uh, before we meet. So it's very good because YouTube sometimes is not as good at reminding people. So fill that out if you want that. But if you scroll down, there's a calendar of what we're talking about and when. And actually, I'm going to update the calendar uh, tomorrow, actually. Monday is the day I do that. Composition uh, is what we're talking about today. We got using the metronome to improve your playing that's what we're talking about on Friday. We've talked about how to use the metronome a little bit before, but this time I'm going to go into more detail about how you can actually use it 
in a practical way to uh, improve your practice strategy and uh, get even better at piano. And then on Sunday, we're talking about exercises to help you move your hands long distances. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I felt that one coming. That was the lettuce I ate at dinner, I think. Uh, anyway, so uh, a lot of times we'll have pieces where you have to like play a note out here. And you have to get in, you know, really, really far on the piano. You have to move a huge, huge distance. So I'm going to come up with a little strategy or a little bit exercise for you to do that. And then the following on uh, May the 4th be with you on that Friday, we're going to be talking. Oh, let me show you what I'm doing. <laughs> You're like, what? Uh, we're going to be talking about your first jazz piece. And we're going to be talking about the piece Satin Doll, which is probably one of the easier um, jazz pieces that you can learn in the beginning. And I'm going to be talking about what makes jazz what it is. Some things you'll have to be on the lookout for that. And then we have a composition lesson number three on May the 6th, which is a continuation of what we're talking about today, where we take everything we've done so far and then we build on creating a melody. So remember that I said a, a genre is really defined by three things. It's rhythm. Uh, rhythm is probably the most important. It's chords and then it's melody. And I'm also going to talk about how to write a decent melody and some uh, things behind that. That was super helpful. Can you improve a little showing what notes are available with, let's say, uh, the key of A? Okay. With what notes are available? Let's see the key of A with three sharps. Yeah, sure. So you know that the key A already has three sharps, and you can look up what they are. But uh, I know already that those sharps are F, C, and G. Now the thing to keep in mind about when you have notes that are sharped in a key or flatted, that generally that they are actually replacing their natural counterpart, meaning just the regular notes. So instead of uh, F, or F sharp, G sharp, and C sharp are replacing the notes F. C or F, G, and C. So instead of these ones, we have these ones. So just keep that in mind that you're not also going to be playing these and these. These are replacing these. So uh, another thing about the key of A, right? So if you play the A major scale, you got A, B, and then wherever you have a sharp, it's replacing that note. C, F sharp, and G sharp back to A. And playing the scale before you play a piece or write a piece in a key is very, very helpful because it literally helps you visually, you know, maybe I will, oh, no, 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 I have to do it this way. Visually, what notes you're going to be playing in that piece. That means basically we're, we're going to be playing almost everything except for C naturals, F naturals, and G naturals because those are the ones that are sharped. This affects chords too. So when you have chords in the key of A, you know, obviously when I have an A chord in the key of A, anytime I have an F, C, or G in the chord, that also has to be sharp. So keep that in mind as well. So say I have a D chord in the key of A, well, it has to have that F sharp in it, unless it tells you otherwise in the middle of the piece, but that's a lot less common. So just know that the key gives you what notes you're gonna be commonly seeing in a piece, it's not a end-all, be-all, but it is generally showing you what you're going to be uh, experiencing throughout. Yeah, not always replacing because of natural. So yeah, if there's a natural in there, um, that will you will play the natural note. But in general, like I said, um, you're going to be seeing mostly just F, C's, or you won't be seeing many C's, F's, and G's. You can see them in the piece or play them, but they're not as common. Okay, when I try looking a new song, I look for the key, study the scale, and the chords first. That's wonderful. That's a great practice, Bernadine. Is there some possibility or a way to download the lessons or courses for offline? The answer is yes. Uh, email me about that, though. Reference and practice purposes. Oh, wait, hold on. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. Practice purposes, given that uh, time and internet speeds can be quite slow in South Africa. The answer is uh, absolutely yes on that. Um, so all the practice sheets and everything can be downloaded from the website. Uh, now, I'm a PC person, but I'm pretty sure I'm Mac too. Uh, you can, where it'll say um, download. Actually, let me show you. Let me show you. Um, yeah, this is fine. Let me... Let me log in here to my own website. 
so I can show you for myself. I'll also give you a little preview on what the courses are like in the meantime. All right, so just give me a second. I don't want to log in in front of you because then you'll see my uh, <laughs> all my stuff. So here we go. All right, here we go. Okay, so I've logged in the course Introduction to Piano and Music. And the question was, can I download uh, the worksheets and everything? You can even download the videos. Um, I don't want to tell you here because because it's like kind of a uh, an interesting method to doing that. Uh, email me about that. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you don't have my email, just um, message private message me over Facebook. And I can tell you how to do it. But all the worksheets is very, very easy. Because what you do is you um, you will, if you're on a tablet, you just click and hold. But if you right-click with your mouse, and you can click, is it save link as, or will that save it as the, yeah, no, no, no that'll do it. Because save is PowerPoint, right? So yeah, you, you right-click, and it'll say save as, or save link as, or something like that. You can also open it up by left-clicking. Or no, actually, when I left-click, it just downloads it. I know on some some devices it opens it and some it downloads it. If it doesn't download it right away, just right-click and click Save As. Uh, Julio says, Tim, I have, uh, I have a question about the courses on, in your web. Okay, since I live in the Philippines and the prices aren't written in my country's currency, how should I pay? Well, you can, um, do you have credit card or PayPal? PayPal works as well. PayPal is great for international purposes, but I can even take credit cards um, so long as it's uh, Visa, MasterCard, any of the bigger ones. Uh, I can take foreign payments. I've, um, I have students from all over the world that have signed up. And if you have any trouble at all, just let me know, like email me um, or something like that, and I can provide you you know, further instruction, or if all else fails and somehow um, you can't sign up through the website for whatever reason, whether, I know some people, like one person lived on an island that wasn't listed in the countries, like uh, that came down in the drop down list. So we had to figure out a way to get around that. I think I had to send them like some kind of email, uh, PayPal request, and they were able to complete it that way. So there's always a way. I've never had a student that was unable to pay and we weren't able to work something out in some fashion or another. So there's definitely um, a way to do that. If you want to know what the prices are in uh, the Philippines, you can just type in, uh, so say something costs $15 uh, USD, which is United States dollar. And then you just say US. oh wait, let me show you what I'm doing here. <laughs> so in a search, wait, let me go to Google first. I keep forgetting to show you guys uh, what I'm doing. Anyway, so say something that costs $15 just say uh, US or USD, and then two, and then whatever your currency is. So uh, Philippines, I'm just going to type in Philippine, Philippine peso, is that what you guys use? So $15 is 782.48 pesos. So just type in whatever, you know, the price is. So say you're going for the beginner's pack, which is on sale right now, $29.99. Uh, and then that will convert it to your pesos. Um, when you do, like, when you complete the order, it should convert automatically. But if ahead of time you want to see what the conversion is and everything, you can do it um, there. So, so you can pay uh, any uh, credit card, PayPal, and if you can't figure that out or if it just doesn't go through for whatever reason, uh, we can figure something else out. Arud, I need to take for now... Me, thanks. Okay, what is my email? My email is tim at lessonsontheweb.com. You can email me tim at pianolessonsontheweb.com, but I don't use that one as much, so it might be a, another day or two before I get to you, just because I check the one at tim at lessonsontheweb.com uh, the most. Okay, thank you, Tim. We'll do, says Laredo. All right. All 
Okay, I have to agree, Rich. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, if you keep going back to the beginning, you never fix your mistake. Really good lesson to learn. Yeah, very, very true. I have to agree, Rich. I don't think it helps with reading music either. I find it fairly uh, quickly the bars that I keep repeating are implanted in my memory. That's true. Uh, you know, I, I don't even think I mentioned that when I was talking about not starting from the beginning all the time. When you start starting from the beginning all the time, you're also starting to commit the piece to memory. So then you're actually not even actively looking at the notes anymore. Hey, Fireflower is here for the last uh, ten, 10 minutes or so. Welcome out, Fireflower. Happy you could join us today. Of course, you can check out the recording once we're finished. What key signature would Furry Lease be in? Is this an, is there an obvious key in most songs? Well, the one like obvious thing you can do is just look up what key is Furry Lease in. But if you want to uh, look it up, Furry Lease, I don't know if I can bring it up in front of me right now. Oh, yeah, I can do it. Hold on. Um, Furry Lease sheet music. And we can get any version up here. Really doesn't matter. And no, I don't want to download it right now. Anywho. So hopefully, as you can see from here, even though the quality isn't that great, is that um, for release has no sharps and no flats written in. So one thing I didn't mention about key signatures, at least, I mean, I mentioned a while ago, not in this lesson, is that for every key signature, there's a major and a minor equivalent. So we've been talking about all major uh, chords so far, all major keys. Uh, this uh, Furry Lease is also known as the Bagatelle in A minor. So that tells you what key it's in. It's actually an A minor. And one of the things you can do to tell what key that you're in is take a look at the first chord outlined in the left hand. Um, let's see. Yeah, the first chord outlined in the left hand. So I have the notes A, E, A. Well, that's a, um, it's basically a, what we call a power chord, but it's an A minor chord. So most of the time, whatever key you're in, the first and last chord of the piece is going to be in that key. You can also go by the sound. Does that sound major or minor to you? Well, it sounds minor to me, right? Or actually, I play all the chords in the, in the measure. It sounds like that, too. So, yeah. Now, if it sounded like, or something, I know that sounded really jarring, um, but it sounded like that, you'd be like, all right, well, we're probably in a major key. So major sounds happy, minor sounds sad. <laughs> Grace says, hi, Fireflower, I've seen you in another lesson. Yeah, it's so awesome that we can come here as students and get to know each other a bit. Sorry, I'm late. That's all right. All right. Any other questions? We're going to wrap it up here in about five minutes or so. Uh, I'm going to do a formal outro for the uh, lesson. If you don't know what that is, when I piece when I piece together the lesson, uh, I like to have like a thing at the end telling what I want students to do next. All right, students, thank you for coming. I only think about another, a better way to say it. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the lesson, if you have not seen the lesson about building chords for your piece, I highly recommend you check that out. This is going to be a series, I don't know, maybe a three, four or more lessons on composition, going through the, you know, the each component you need to know about for each. One thing I wanted you to do if you've seen that lesson already is subscribe because we have new lessons coming out every Friday, every Sunday, and peppered out in between as well, so you don't want to miss a beat. So subscribe to Piano Lessons on the web today and become a part of our classroom. This has been Tim from Piano Lessons on the web. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Uh, Tim, do you offer assessments? I do offer assessments. You mean like in terms of like, uh, you know, listening to you play and give feedback. What I can do, I sort of mentioned this on the website, but not really. One thing I mentioned on the website is you have me to answer your questions. Uh, one thing you can do is if you can record yourself playing, like whether it's, um, you know, an audio recording or a video recording, 
and you send it to me. Rich does this sometimes. He puts it up on his YouTube and sends it to me. Um, you can even make private YouTube videos or, yeah, yeah, and then send them to me. Um, and then I'd be more than willing to spend a few minutes or a while like looking over what you've sent me and then getting back to you. So in a, in a way, yes, I don't do them officially, but yeah, if you send me something you've done or even assignment that you do on the website or something like that, then certainly, yeah, I'll look it over and let you know what I think. Oh, assessment. Oh, you mean like to see what level you should be in. Um, what I recommend you do, you can, you can actually, you can send me uh, a recording of a piece that you're playing recently and I can tell you there. Um, what you want to do to see like what level you'd like to begin at with the courses on my website is go through and start at Introduction to Piano Music since that's the easiest course. Click on View Course and scroll down and see, uh, read the course description, you know, read what you need to know. So this course is for those who know nothing. By the end of the course, you'll be able to do these things. So make sure you don't already know all those things, because if you do, you probably want to go to the next course up. And then you can read, you know, what pieces you'll be learning. So if these are pieces at the level you're learning now, these are a lot like nursery rhymes. So they're very easy to start out with Twinkle Twinkle, Mexican Hat Dance, you know, Good King Wenceslas, Mary Had a Little Lamb, and so forth. If they look around the same level as the courses or the, the pieces you're working on right now, then this is the course you probably want to do. Or if you know all of this stuff already, you probably want to go back and then, you know, just keep going forward in the list of courses to see what you may not know. So say you don't know how to read music yet, you might want to start with this how to read music, although it is covered a bit in the introduction course as well. And then uh, keep going through the piano courses. So if you're just interested in piano, you know, click on piano level one. Uh, this is for, you know, you say, what do you need to know? And these are all the things covered in the introduction course. You know, you should know how to read notes on the staff, what dynamics are and so forth. So go through the course description pages and see uh, where you think you'll fit in. Um, if you have any other questions or you want to actually send me a recording or something you've done and then I can kind of like and give me a little background on what you've been working on, I can definitely see where you would fit in best that way. Okay, Julio says, I have a question about last Friday or yeah, Friday about uh, piano pedaling. How do you use the half pedal technique uh, how does it differentiate from the standard on and off? So uh, with a lot of keyboards like mine, the pedal, if I have it held down all the way, it will extend the notes or sustain them rather. But there's a point where if I lift it up too much, the signal turns off because it's only an on or off signal. With a, with a mechanical pedal, you can actually have the half pedal technique is literally you have the, the pedal half down and that'll just kind of blend the notes together but will also give you some, um, so, but it won't blend them together too much. So you'll still be able to play staccatos in a little bit while still having like the sound blend together a little bit. That's really all there is to it. You just have the pedal half down. <laughs> you just press it halfway. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm still to upload the recording. I promise you, Tim. Something always gets in the way. I can understand that. Fingers crossed I'll get sufficient peace to do it sometime this week. All right. Looking forward to it. Anytime you can do it, Karen, I really appreciate that. What should I be doing when I'm testing level 8 CM? I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, I'm not, because uh, this sounds like it's a uh, an assessment that I'm not really familiar with. Okay, uh, wait, hold on. Piano test? I don't know, let me see. Oh, is it part of the ABRSM exams? Um, so I tell you what, we only have like a minute here. So I'll tell you what, email me Tim at lessonsontheweb.com uh, with you know a little bit more details on uh, the what you're you know testing for, 
and you know maybe even link me to something that kind of explains it a little bit and I could take a look at it for you. Okay, Loria says, I'm looking forward to playing The Blue Danube. That one's a good one. Piano Man and Your Song Someday. All right, perfect. Tina, I see the question above. A certificate of merit. So, yeah. Um, should I be doing when testing? Yeah, you know, I'm going to have to look at that a little bit later. So, like I said, email me, and I'll take a look at that for you. Um, then, or you can, uh, you can also message me on Facebook, uh, send me a private message and I'll get back to you then. I am kind of curious though, what, cause I, I, ha I am a little bit familiar with this level eight piano test exam. All right. Uh, piano grade eight exam consists of three pieces chosen by learners from lists uh, in the current syllable. Okay. Um, yeah, I might have to come back to this later because I'm not familiar with this a whole lot at all. I mean, they give if this is what you're talking about, they give you the list of pieces that uh, you should be working on. Grade eight looks fairly advanced. Looking through the pieces here, um, it looks fairly advanced. Uh, so obviously you should be playing all your chords, all your scales. Um, you know what I recommend you do? Have you checked out my free uh, piano ebook? Let me get you a link to that. Have you checked that out yet? Uh, let me find it. Hold on. Okay. Oops. There we go. All right, so what I recommend you do is sign up for my free ebook, which is the Piano Practice Guide, and I break down whether you're like a beginner, intermediate, and advanced student, and what you should be working on and how much time you should be spending on each. I think that will, that will answer your question, I think. Uh, all right. Great lesson, says Linda. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. It was certainly very interesting. Okay, Skype. What should I be doing when I... Okay, I answered that. Okay, everybody. I think I am... No, not yet. Thanks, though. Yeah, so check that out, Grace. Check out my piano practice guide. It's totally free. You'll have to put it in your email, um, but you know, it'll send it right over to you. And for whatever reason, you don't get it. Because uh, sometimes the email filters will grab it. Um, let me know. What was the song I suggested for jazz? Oh, um, my first jazz piece was it Sat Satin Doll, right? I'm pretty sure that was it. You mean the one that we're going to cover in a week or so? Your first jazz piece? Yeah, Satin Dolls. S-A-T-I-N-D-O-L-L. -L. Uh, Larry says, I'm glad that I'm a part of this community. I'm humbled and honored. Thank you, Tim and fellow students, for the all the interaction and help. Good night, everybody. Yeah, we had another great... Uh, let's see. Yeah, we had another great class. Sorry, I had to look at something there. We had another great class. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight and being a wonderful part of our classroom, a wonderful part of our community. So thank you so much for that. Remember that there's a sale going on right now at Piano Lessons on the web.com on my courses so if you've been looking to pick up some of the courses now is a terrific time to do so but um again thank you so much for coming thank you so much for you know engaging with each other or talking with one another helping each other at, out asking great questions but you know if you just sat back and relaxed today uh that's totally fine with me as well 
All right, everybody, have a great night. I'm going to talk to you next Friday, and yeah, have a great week. So this has been You Know Who, Tim from Piano Lessons on the Web. Thanks for being a part of our classroom, and I'll talk to you real, real soon. Thank you so much.